Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Kara is out of town tonight. That means I made myself an awesome steak. Uh, it also means I'm going to dive into some awesome wine, so let's talk about it. Um, just the other day I was at Costco, and this wine right here caught my eye. Um, this is the Renegade. It's made by uh, Ancient Peaks Winery. Uh, this Renegade blend is made up of 51% Syrah, 25% Malbec, and 24% Petit Verdot. And this is from Paso Robles. And it's a single vineyard wine. It's from the uh, Margarita Vineyard in Paso Robles. So the thing that really struck my eye was, you know, they're calling this the Renegade because it's not really following any sort of tradition. I mean, there's plenty of uh, wineries in Paso Robles that just focus on those Rhone varietals, especially Syrah, Grenache, Mouvedre. Um, then you've also got some wineries that are really into the Bordeaux-style wines, talking about uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Malbec and Petit Bordeaux and all those things. Um, so it's kind of neat to see a winery just kind of embracing both of those things. They call themselves uh, the Red Renegade just because this isn't a normal type of blend. Predominantly Syrah, but again, we've got about 49% of these Bordeaux uh, varieties of grapes sneaking in. So let's see what this is all about. Color-wise, this is super dark, super dense, uh, very much uh, uh, purplish in nature right here. Uh, just a really dark, dense ruby red with these, whoo, like big violet uh, purple hints that I'm thinking you can see as I swirl that glass there. Super dense, you're not seeing anything uh, through this. So it's very inky and we're gonna say that a lot of that is coming from the uh, Syrah and also from that Petit Verdot. So, Let's get our noses into this glass. And just really dense, dark fruit. I'm getting like a plum, raspberry. A little bit of a blueberry play there as well. Kind of leathery, kind of spicy, black pepper. And it's a little uh, vanilla-y. I mean, there is a little bit of oak coming through on that nose as well. So, let's try it on the old palate. This is really dense very tannic, very jammy. This is definitely a wine where it's very, you know, it's pleasant right now, um, but I can imagine that the tannins are gonna soften up, um, and I think that the fruit is, be go is gonna be a little bit more uh, balanced uh, as we look at this, you know, three, four, five years down the road. Um, but definitely a, a, a nice wine with some nice structure. Um, these tannins are very aggressive, but they're those really fun, kind of chalky tannins uh, that I'm definitely into. Let me pick out these fruits for you. Nice little play between um, the, the those dark, dense plums, but also um, like some cherries coming through there as well um and almost kind of like uh, a little bit of a sour uh cherry type of component um you know the oak is definitely present but it's not uh over the top it's not out of balance in any way um the alcohol uh i do have to say is kind of coming through here it's 14.1 um, but it's coming off as being a little bit more aggressive than that. I mean, if you'd have told me this was 15% alcohol, I believe you. Um, so, I mean, definitely not as in balance as we would like, but I also think that, um, you know, over time it, it can kind of balance out. This is definitely a pleasant wine. Um, you know, blind, I think what's interesting because it is just, 
it is so tannic, um, and it is so uh, much loaded full of these just dark, dense fruits. I mean, blind, I would almost go petite Syrah on this. I mean, this is definitely, you know, super dense and inky, and, and I guess that's what you get when you're blending the that uh, Syrah with that Petit Verdot. The Malbec, um, I think, is kind of giving it that, like, uh, cherry cola type of play, but, but definitely a nice wine. Uh, you know, I, I don't recall exactly how much. It was right in that $15 range when I got this at Costco. Um, and, and I would say for $15, it's definitely a, a pleasant wine and, and a wine that, that you may want to try. Um, and again, I think over time, I think it's going to be a little bit better. Uh, point wise, I'm, I'm putting it at like, uh, an 87 plus right here. And I think really it's just because it's just a, a little bit awkward there. Those flavors really haven't started marrying each other yet, but I can see where uh, that is going to come into play. I'm going to pour myself just a little bit more of this wine. And I'm going to try it with some of this food that I made for myself. And, uh, you know, I'll show you real quick. I'll also probably post a picture down below. Um, this is a New York strip. And, and forgive me, because it didn't really come off with the uh, color that I was looking for. Uh, halfway through when I was grilling, I ran out of propane, so I had to switch tanks real quick. Um, but it didn't get that super dark sear uh, that I was looking for, but whatever. Uh, I put a little bit of fresh rosemary on there for garnish, but also, you know, I chopped some up and, and spread that over the steak at the beginning. This is the New York strip. Uh, I also got some broccolini down here, and I do have some mashed potatoes. So let's just see how these flavors are working. I like my steaks medium rare, and I'm hoping I got that temperature right. I've never made a steak with the uh, propane running out halfway through. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, a little bit under medium rare, but that's okay, because that's kind of how I like my steaks anyways, a little bit juicy, right? I always take these big bites. I'm sorry, guys. Give me about 20 seconds here. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> Delicious steak, I must say. Uh, now let's try it with this one. You know, the uh, the wine itself is, I'm, I'm noticing along with this steak, um, that those, those fruits are really getting highlighted when paired with this steak. And let's see if that wine itself is also bringing out some flavors in this steak. Yeah, you know, um, there's not a whole lot. I, I mean, there is acidity there in this wine. It's not that ripping acidity that really rips right through this fat. I mean, the, the thing that's nice about this pairing is, um, you know, the juiciness of the steak with the juiciness of the wine and, and highlighting uh, those dark fruit flavors. I think that's what you're really looking for. Um, you know, not the, the best food and wine pairing I've ever done. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect um, with this wine. Honestly, in the future, I think, wow, I mean, honestly, right now, I wouldn't really pair this wine with anything. Um, maybe some beef jerky. Actually, that'd be really good. Uh, I'd pair it with some beef jerky. I'd wait a couple years and wait for this wine to kind of soften up a little bit and, and maybe, you know, as far as steaks, maybe a juicier cut of meat, maybe think about like a filet mignon or something like that. Um, 
but I, I think that's really where the wine and the food are going to find their sweet spot on this. Um, so again, I, did I say 87 on this wine? I'm saying 87. Um, and as far as the food pairing, you know, I, I messed up, guys. Sorry. I don't know what else to say. Uh, leave a comment. When's the last time a food and wine pairing went bad for you? Everybody, stay rad.